Steve, the electoral map is obviously a big factor in this decision, why so many of her VP choices are from battleground states, why that's where she's prioritizing these visits, kicking off the joint ticket. But how much of a home state advantage can be expected with a VP pick? Yeah, let, let's look at this just in terms of Shapiro, Pennsylvania, Kelly, Arizona, and, and maybe Walls, Minnesota. That's a little more complicated. But from that standpoint, you know, as a reminder, look, Pennsylvania, this was the 2020 result. Biden by 80,000 votes, barely one point. Arizona was 10,000 votes for Biden. Both of those states had gone Trump in 2016. 19 electoral votes in Pennsylvania. The case for taking Shapiro just politically, you know, would be, does it give you a critical boost for 19 electoral votes? or Kelly, critical boost for 11 in Arizona. Well, here's what we can tell you in terms of what a boost might be if there is one. Looking at some recent vice presidential picks on the Democratic side, what you're seeing in this chart is, take, for example, this 2016 race. Remember, Hillary Clinton put Tim Kaine from Virginia on the ticket. Now, in 2016, the national popular vote got two points more Republican than it had been in 2012. There was a national shift in 2016 of two points toward the Republicans. Now, Tim Kaine from Virginia, what happened in Virginia that same election? It actually shifted uh, one point more Democratic. So nationally, Republican trend with Virginian Tim Kaine on the ticket, Virginia actually a little more Democratic. Now, that's not all a Tim Kaine effect. There's state-specific factors. There's longer-term trends. There's demographics. But you see a pattern like this kind of playing out with most of these picks here, where the Democrats are doing a little bit better in the states where their VP picks are from than the national swing would suggest. So it suggests there's some effect there, small, limited. But again, if you're talking, you're trying to pick up a point or two to get 19 points and uh, 19 electoral votes in Pennsylvania or 11 in Arizona, it raises the point, could that make all the difference? And then quickly, when we say Tim Walls, Minnesota, look, if the Democrats are fighting for the electoral votes from Minnesota, it probably means they've got a ton of trouble elsewhere on the map. So the case for picking Walls that you're hearing is less Minnesota specific, but it's more, hey, he's got an appeal to a type of voter, blue collar voters who had been Democratic traditionally, who have trended Republican in the Trump era of maybe bringing some of those voters back and helping in a state like Wisconsin or maybe Michigan or Pennsylvania. The problem politically with that is when you look at how Walls won his race in 2022 in Minnesota, he didn't do any better than Biden in exactly those kinds of areas. So the idea he's going to give a boost with voters in uh, rural blue collar areas that the Democrats weren't already getting, he didn't show it last time he was on the ballot. Fascinating to see those historic trends. Steve Kornacki, thanks. Amy, what are you hearing from your sources about the Harris pick? I'm hearing a lot of people running towards Shapiro, even though it is problematic with um, the, the whole um, situation in Gaza. I know it's going to be a very problematic issue, but I think people say, look, if he's 60, if he gets 60 percent approval in his state, it's so hard to do right now in such a polarized time. Um, they think that he would bring energy. They think that he would not only galvanize the base, but that he would reach help reach across party lines and get some undecided voters, some people who are kind of on the fence about supporting uh, the vice president. So a lot of people are very, um, they want him, but I'm hearing also from a lot of House Democrats in particular who are very pro-Governor Walls. And so it's a very interesting um, kind of pick right now. And I've heard from a lot of people that she feels really comfortable with all three of these choices, with Senator Kelly as well, someone she likes a lot. So it'll be interesting, obviously, to see uh, where the pick goes. Governor Shapiro has a nearly 60 percent approval rating in Pennsylvania, almost unheard of in this era. And yet you mentioned that there are some Democrats with reservations. Pennsylvania Senator John Fetterman, among those with concerns about a Shapiro pick, what are the reservations specifically about him? You mentioned Gaza. Is that it? I think that is the major issue here. You know, the, we're coming out of on a very fractured time for the party. The party is finally unified. Um, they are energized. There are a lot of people. There's a lot of concern that the party could fracture again and that this is a very delicate issue and they don't want to fracture the party once again. So I think a lot of this is based on what is happening in Gaza. Um, but I think most of the concern, I mean, most of the uh, people are really energized by him. They think that 
that uh, a ticket with him could really, really energize uh, the base and beyond. And I think that's why you're seeing a lot of Democrats kind of quietly pushing for him uh, behind the scenes. And of all the states we've been talking about in the battleground mix, Pennsylvania is such a key for Democrats to pick up if they want to get to that magic number of electoral votes. Amy Parnes, thanks for giving us the very latest on your end. I appreciate you.